Hello everybody, this is So the Tiger with another fish keeping video. Right, this video is going to be a general video about keeping fish. I'll be showing examples of my beta, a beta tank, and of a tropical com community type tank. So let me just go back over here. So this is my beta tank and betas are a aggressive type of fish so they need to be kept on their own. Male betas should definitely be kept on their own as betas are also called Siamese fighting fish and males will fight until one gets injured or dies. So it is recommended to keep betas on their own. The minimum recommended tank size for a beta is two and a half gallons. That is the minimum size. Five gallons or more is better. It gives them more room to swim around and they will have a better quality of life. So whatever type of fish you're keeping, whether you're keeping a beta or general uh, community type tank you will need some basic equipment you will need a tank this is an all glass tank and this one is five gallons five gallons is, a, is the smallest size for a community type tank really so you can keep a few fish together and they will have some room to swim about so this is a 5 gallon tank, it's 24 litres, it's all glass and you'll need some substrate in your tank. So this is just normal aquarium gravel, there are all different substrates available. From basic gravel like this, you can have coloured gravel, sort of natural colours like black and brown and grey, to anything like neon bright colours that might appeal to children but are not natural in any way and I probably wouldn't recommend that I would recommend to using either natural gravel or a dark coloured substrate the black works quite well with plants and fish it brings out the colours in, in the fish and the plants so we have some gravel if you're growing plants you will need about an inch to an inch and a half so that the plants can grow. You need something to grow in. If you're keeping tropical fish then you will need a heater of a suitable rating. This is a 5 gallon tank and I have a 25 watt heater. I am keeping a beta in this tank so the temperature is set to about 27 degrees celsius or 80 fahrenheit and to check the temperature you will need a thermometer there are various ones available the cheapest being the stick on lcd type it sticks on the outside of the tank and you can see here that we have an indication of approximately 27 degrees celsius or 80 fahrenheit which is a good temperature to keep a beta you need a, a thermal thermometer so that you can set the thermostat in your heater to make sure it's working properly. So for general tropical fish, anything between say 24 and 25 is good. Betas like it a bit on the warmer side. So you can adjust the temperature with the knob on the heater I would recommend that you bought a heater that was a, is adjustable because no doubt you will need to adjust it to, to have the temperature at the setting that you desire so strongly recommend one that has an adjuster knob those fixed temperature ones are not really recommended I have one and it was no good you will need a light on your tank now what sort of light you need depends 
if you have live plants in your tank. If you have live plants in your tank, then you'll need a light that is reasonably strong, gives a good light in the tank. If you have plastic or silk plants in your tank, you can use whatever light makes the aquarium attractive to you. Uh, plants need a natural looking light to grow properly. An essential piece of equipment for your tank is a filter. The filter contains beneficial bacteria which convert the waste that your fish produce into safe chemicals because fish breathe out ammonia and they produce ammonia in the waste and ammonia is toxic to fish if it's left to build up so bacteria in the filter convert the ammonia into nitrates which is less harmful and is also used as a fertilizer by live plants if you have a filter in your tank you'll still you'll need to maintain it so every week or every other week you will need to rinse the media that's in your filter using only old tank water never use tap water because it contains chlorine and chlorine is a, a disinfectant it kills bacteria that's why it's added to tap water to make it safe for humans to drink which also means it is not good for your fish so when you when you maintain your tank you will have to change some of the water so every week you will need to perform water changes to keep the water clean and fresh I change my water twice a week and I change about 40 to 50 percent of the tank water I siphon it out using a siphon and a bucket like I have here it is recommended that you use a, a siphon pump rather than just using tubing and sucking on it to make, to make a siphon because that will guarantee you having a mouthful of tank water and that's not pleasant and there is bacteria in the water so that's not good for your health either so a siphon pump on a bucket you can use a nylon scourer to gently clean the glass but you must only use this scourer for fish tank use never use one that has had chemicals in it because that is harmful to your fish as cleaning chemicals can contain bleach and other substances which are very harmful or fatal to your fish so that's that also it's a good idea to keep a old towel handy because no doubt you'll spill water and drip it in places that you'll want to clean it up from so keep an old towel for this job you don't want to use your nice towels that you use for your baths for this kind of work so I have an old towel here that I use to mop up spills so if we go back to this tank over time you'll find algae will grow on the glass so you use the scourer to gently remove it the object here to do it gently otherwise you may scratch the glass it is probably recommended that you have a glass tank because it is more durable though plastic tanks may be cheaper but it's easier to scratch them and that can become unsightly it's recommended that your tank has a hood or canopy or failing that a cover that's just to keep the dust out and to stop your fish jumping out because baiters can occasionally jump out of the tank and that can end in tears so a cover will help to keep him in and dirt and dust out if you have a canopy it will probably have a light in it to illuminate your tank my 
tank only came with this plastic cover so I'm using a desk lamp as a source of illumination you may have your own ideas for lighting though it's probably recommended then that you pour a tank with a canopy that has a built-in light so I like to have live plants in my tank for two reasons one they look nice and two they help to improve the water quality by absorbing nitrates that are produced by your filter as it converts the fish waste that the ammonia that is harmful into nitrates that are less harmful and those are removed by the plants which use them as a fertilizer and when you do water changes you need to do water changes regularly at least once a week I do mine twice a week as this helps to keep the water clean and clean water is essential to keeping your fish healthy many problems are caused by dirty water so keep the water clean and your fish should be happy and healthy if your fish has any make has any odd behavior or this looks unhappy and is not acting normally then the first thing to do is perform a water change as that will help and you can buy various medicines from the pet store if you have problems I have some up here I have this, this, this is the disease clear it's a kind of general medication if you have any signs of illness then you can use that there are also specific medicines for specific health issues such as white spot and this is a swim bladder treatment but there are many different ones in the pet store it's a good idea to keep a couple of these on hand in case you need them at short notice when the pet store is closed i.e. in the evening or at the weekend or public holiday for example so keeping a couple of these on hand is a good idea so so if you have a fish or keeping fish then maintenance is a part of owning a pet if you don't want to do any maintenance then it's recommended you don't choose any pet or animal because their quality of life is completely dependent on you so if you don't want to do any work then don't have a live animal or fish or bird or any creature as this is not for you so having an aquarium you can landscape it in whichever way you fancy now this is my beta tank and I have rescaped it recently because the plants I had were kind of taking over a bit and I wanted to rearrange it as well so I put the heater on the back wall instead of at the side and I'm growing a patch of water hysteria to grow up and to hide the heater so that's why I've done that the plants I have in here are Luigia which is looking pretty green but under good bright light will turn red we have water wisteria at the back, which is Hygrophila deformis. I've had good success with that plant, so I'm growing that. In the centre is some Java fern. That plant is very easy to grow. It likes lower light levels. And normally you would tie that to a rock or wood. It doesn't not like having its roots buried in the gravel. So I've just wedged them into a flower pot for the time being. At the back is some corkscrew ballast. There's a no, uh, there's a, a straight version as well, but this is the corkscrew bell. 
At the front here we have a cryptocurrency. It's a green one. And that likes lower light levels as well. Plants will need fertilizer as well, like the plants you have in your garden. If you want them to grow well, you need to use a fertilizer. So you can add a liquid fertilizer to the water and you can add tablets into the gravel. I will show you what I have over here. I have this is a fertilizer powder. You add it to water to make a solution and you add the prescribed amount to the water. I add a, a little every day in my tank, in my beta tank. Also there are fertilizer tablets like these ones that you put in the gravel. These ones will feed your plants for up to six months before you need to add any more. I also have, this is my other tank, it's a 20 gallon tropical community type tank. And I have lots of plants in this tank and I have different lighting in this tank. I have two 24 watt T5 fluorescent tubes. They're a daylight color rating and I have reflectors on top of the tubes to reflect the light down into the tank. So this tank is a bit more high tech and because of this I add a liquid carbon fertilizer. Plants need various things to grow well. They need carbon, they need light and they need various nutrients that you have in the fertilizers so you add the fertilizers and the carbon liquid carbon and you provide good light and that gives you good growth in your plants so that's how that works now when you change the water in your tank I said I used a siphon in the bucket to drain the water out I use the siphon to vacuum the gravel on the bottom of the tank. I give it a good going over. It just helps to keep the bottom of the tank clean. Although this probably could be helped by having some bottom feeding fish. I don't have any bottom feeding fish. So things like Cory catfish are good for that. You have say three of those in the bottom of your tank. They don't grow very big and they tend to come out at night so and they root around in the gravel so that's one way to help keep the tank clean. When you have fish, fish need to be fed and depending on what fish you have that governs what food you need. So a beta fish is a Carnivore, for example, they eat insects and bugs and things like that more than they do eating plants. So it's a meat. These are beta is a meat-eating fish, so they need a diet that is high in protein. So this is this food is contains a lot of of uh, insects, it's 51% insects and crustaceans so a high sort of meat content so this is a beta specific food if you have tropical community fish like we have in this tank this tank has guppies and danios in it they are more omnivorous, they eat plant material and insects so you can feed them with tropical flakes. So this is just a shop own brand of flake food. You can also feed your fish on pellets. These are tropical mini pellets. There's about 45% protein in these. And I feed my beta with 
these as well and you can buy freeze dried live foods to feed your fish so I have dried daphnia and dried blood worms and the fish like those and it's a good idea to mix the foods that you give to your fish to give them some variety but for example baiters are not really suited to tropical flakes they prefer the beta pellets and freeze dried live foods so you need to feed a suitable diet to your fish and feeding a beta well betas have very small stomachs and a lot of places you'll find that it says that the beta's stomach is the size of its eye and if you look at a beta its eye is not very big so that means you need to feed it very little so with the pellets with the, these pellets the recommended amount is two pellets at a time at one feeding and you might think that that is hardly anything but then the size of the beta's stomach is very small so it's two of these in the morning two in the evening and that is it you do not want to feed any more you can replace one of these feedings with the freeze dried live foods if you overfeed your beta it will get constipated very easily and your fish will swell up like a balloon or the front part of your fish will swell up like a balloon and the way to cure that is to stop the feeding and to use a swim bladder treatment I used the swim bladder treatment and my fish was cured in 24 hours the swelling went down massively so you can to cure it in betas you can use the medication and you can feed them daphnia as daphnia has a laxative effect on your beta so a pinch of that and the, the the recommended amount of this the instructions tell you clearly how much to use and it's all dependent on the volume of your tank so also when you add water to your tank water contains chlorine which is a disinfectant is added to water but that is harmful to your fish so to make the water safe for use you need to use a, an aquarium dechlorinator it comes under many different brands but they all do the same job this is a concentrated version where one drop of this solution is enough for four gallons of water. To give you an idea, four gallons is two of these buckets and you only need one drop of this solution so it's very concentrated. I've had this bottle for several months and it says on the front of the bottle that this one bottle treats 14,000 litres so buying a concentrate is a lot more economical in buying some of the other ready-made solutions in the pet store so this tank is a bit more sophisticated and I have two internal filters in this tank and right, this is a 20 gallon tank and it has a 100 watt heater in the back it's set to about 26 degrees celsius 
I have 48 watts of light in this tank and on this tank I use an electronic thermometer it's just another type of thermometer it has an LCD display and a sensor that's on the end of a cable also to clean the glass you can use a nylon scourer use gently or you can buy an algae magnet from your pet store and that does the same thing except you can operate it from outside without getting your hands wet and so this is just a rough guide to keeping fish I have a small fish net here that I use to scoop out debris and to net the fish from the bag into the tank also you should have your lights on for a certain number of hours a day now to grow plants you need to have the lights on for a certain amount of time now I have the lights on for from 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night so that's 6 hours and I control that with a plug-in timer and it's the timer that controls the light on the beta's tank and I have 6 hours set on the timer now the reason why the lights are on only for 6 hours is that if you have the lights on all day long then this can make algae grow too much in your tank so too much light will make algae grow and algae is a pain because you have to clean it off of stuff and it's unsightly so the way around that is to have your lights on a timer and for me six hours works fine I'm getting plenty of light to grow the plants but I don't have lots of algae if you have lots of algae in your tank lots of brown type algae the sort of woolly fluffy stuff then that's an indicator that you don't have enough carbon dioxide in your tank water and you need to increase the amount of CO2 in the water and the easiest way that I found is to use a liquid carbon I started using this and my brown algae problems disappeared so and that also helps the plants to grow since plants need carbon to grow so anyway I've been going on a bit in this video but this is how you care for aquarium fish and you can spend a lot of money on this hobby or you can do it on a budget now to save money the cheapest place to buy stuff generally is on the internet internet prices are generally lower than those in the pet stores although having said that going to the pet store is more convenient so it's a trade-off between convenience and price so I buy my stuff generally online the only things I buy from the store are my fish because buying fish through the mail is expensive the delivery charges are very high and you have to be in at a specific time to receive the delivery so that just doesn't work out for me so I buy my fish in person from the pet store and I buy my other stuff online so that's what I do I bought this tank brand new it cost about £28 so I bought that tank new this tank was it was second hand and 
I've had no problems with it. I've had it for many years and I've got no problem with it. The canopy is all homemade. I made it from various pieces of wood. I bought the light fixtures online and I mounted it in my own hood. And my hood is homemade. This is uh, scrap wood from from the garden that I had. I cut it and made a frame and painted it. This top part is actually a wooden shelf. The top part of the canopy is in two halves. The top part lifts away so I can do maintenance and it's flat so I can use it for storage although that may not be a great idea but I use it for storage and I only put lightweight materials on top on the top of my tank mainly aquarium consumables and items like that so nothing heavy on the top of this tank it's recommended to buy a proper tank stand for your tank as it will keep your warranty good if you bought a new tank but also if you buy a purpose made stand you will know that it will be able to take the weight of your tank. If you put your tank on homemade stands or furniture you take your own risk that it may not support the weight and it may break and if your homemade stand breaks then you will have a big mess to clear up so this is a 20 gallon tank and it's sitting on a chest of drawers which was not really meant to hold this weight but to help I have got a big thick board to spread the weight over the top of the furniture so this is a 20 gallon tank and it just fits on this chest of drawers if you have a very large tank then I would only use a proper tank stand if you have a small tank such as this 5 gallon tank well, I had a 3 gallon tank in its place before. So this is a 5 gallon tank and it's sitting on a homemade workbench. Now this is kitchen worktop and it's sitting on a wooden structure here. There is also wooden bracing underneath the, the back which is screwed to the wall. So this bench is quite tough and this tank is relatively small so that's okay if you have a small tank it should be safe to put on most items of sturdy furniture I say sturdy furniture so if you have a small tank like this it should be safe to put on a worktop for example in your kitchen maybe it will be strong enough, although probably a kitchen is not a good environment for your tank but uh, that's up to you some stand, some tanks will need to be stood on polystyrene that depends on whether your tank has a frame or not but if you buy a new tank then any literature that came with it will tell you if you need to use any polystyrene or base mat. I don't have one under here but I do have a base mat under my 20 gallon and they're not that expensive but whatever you put it on must be dead flat so the worktop must be perfectly flat nothing sticking up so if it's had things screwed into it in the past and there's burrs and standing on the top or say the screws do not put your tank over anything like this 
as it may cause the bottom to crack when you fill it up with water so that's an absolute no-no so you can put your tank on a perfectly flat surface if it has a frame on the bottom if there's no frame on the bottom as is there's none here then some sort of mat is required so anyway this is solar tiger with an aquarium video I've gone on for over half an hour now but these are the basics in fish keeping before you buy your fish do your research I stress do your research before buying your fish so research online read books visit your local store ask questions ask other people that have fish go online join a forum and ask people that have many years of experience but do your research before you buy anything and before you buy any fish so research first equipment and fish afterwards and only take this on if you're prepared to do regular maintenance if you're not prepared to do regular maintenance then this hobby is not for you PS if you have fish then most people think that if you have a cat then fish are a no-no but I have a cat I have fish and I don't have any issues so if you have a cat then your tank definitely needs to be covered that will keep kitty out of your tank and the fish in the tank and just basically if you have a cat keep an eye on your cat when you first get your fish and you'll find that after a while cat and fish will get on well together generally they will accept that you have the fish and after a while the fish is not something new and they'll generally ignore it and you won't have any problem so but you know it just pays to be sensible and keep an eye out the same applies if you have children they will need supervision but with some education they will understand how to get along with your fish and everybody will be happy one key thing to note is never tap on the glass as that will scare the hell out of your fish as they can sense vibrations in the water so that also means don't bang things on the worktop don't put your tank near near a door say or where people walk past all the time don't put your tank near to radios or hi-fi stereo systems and anything that makes loud noises or where you have your TV on loud your fish will not like that it will stress them out and they will get ill so that's something to bear in mind so anyway this is Solar Tiger saying thank you for watching my video if you think that this was helpful then please comment and subscribe down below and until next time this is Solar Tiger saying goodbye thank you